to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up yeah. to break every chain, break every chain. That you will access, Satan will watch you rise like as though in a lift and he checks your soul and sees that your soul is rising at the frequency of your wealth that the more you become a millionaire the more your knees touch the ground and he says by what technology has this man accessed where did he route this ah, job said there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are virgin dimensions left for the sons of light. Men who will not bow and yet prosper. That you can be that businessman who can close your business on Tuesday to worship. And people say it's not normal. You say of course. Because my fraternity is not with Babylon. I have understood the mystery of the raven that will bring Elijah bread in Brook Cherry. Are we together? Even as your soul, that's the key word, a millionaire, even as your soul prospers, where you become the treasure of his majesty. It makes no difference whether the wealth is in the throne room or in your account. It's all his own. And he can make demand at any time. Listen, the reason why you trust your bank is the ease of withdrawal. You will run away from any bank that withdrawal becomes difficult. Please sit down. we've not started talking money you see that this wealth thing is not just about money i must be rich i that's you see sometimes in all fairness when we say these things is the reason why hell does not panic at all because the devil knows that we will make a lot of noise and come back after three years and say i've come i don't mind my pride of two years before i i tried everything it didn't work i'm back if it's the soul like jacob let it go if you listen to what i show you building on what your pastor has shown you you will play life like a chess it's a guarantee that i give you it's a guarantee Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Even as your soul prospers. I needed to say this so that you don't, you don't, um, especially for those who may not be members of this church, so that you don't think, oh, there is, they are talking about money again. Let me tell you, think like that. It's a, it's a sign that there is an attack on you. The very fact that your understanding was so constructed. Because, because there are many things that resources depend on. You see, let me tell you this. I would never have a problem with poverty if it were neutral. I hate uh, poverty for one reason. Its effect 
in the program of God. That's it. If poverty were neutral, I would not have any problem with it. But I hate it because I have discerned the role it can play in impeding the program of God. So it becomes my enemy. Now let's deal with the economic system of the kingdom proper. There are certain truths that we must know. Number one, in God's economy, please write this down everyone. In God's economy, all wealth comes from God and belong to God. It is important for you to know this. All wealth, all blessings and all wealth comes from God. This is very basic but very powerful. That means that human beings, businesses, systems, structures are only vehicles, not sources. It's an understanding you must have. All wealth comes from God. Your job, your destiny helper, your business is only a vehicle, a funnel not an origin not source by the time your business becomes abba your source sustainer protector listen in this kingdom owners are rebels we don't own things in this kingdom are we together now we are given stewardship you may freely eat of everything but it's not yours the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership Lack started when ownership came. For as long as he was in his father's house, he had access, but he wanted it in his name. So owners are rebels. In this kingdom, we don't own things. Of course, you can say I own it in terms of the demonstration of responsibility, but then we do not own things. Owners are rebels. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof the walls the systems and all they that dwell therein owners are rebels ownership is what brings all kinds of sicknesses in our world today my car my business my this he said let it not be that when you have built houses you will say to yourself my power and the might of my hand has given me this great wealth but thou shall remember that means you can forget hallelujah look at me please the key to freedom is detachment from things for as long as you are connected to things the stress you listen young people now 20 21 22 have high blood pressure what are they doing with bp that's the consequence of violating the patterns of god the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards. If it is true that you are a steward, it is required that a man be found faithful. So please understand this. In this kingdom, we have access, not ownership. Our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. Our dominion is a derivative of that which Christ has done and that which God, the, the consistency of God's abundance is where we draw from. Of his fullness, we have all received. We didn't give him some. We received. Very powerful key to know and to learn. It's amazing. You see how ownership mentality destroys people. It is my car. Don't touch this. It is my own. It is my offering, my money, my company. The side effect of ownership is that you are responsible for maintenance. When you own that child, you will source for the school fees, source for the health. Lord, this is your child. He has only passed through my womb. I will remain a faithful steward, but I will leave you to remain Abba. Be the source, be the sustainer, be the protector, be the defender. Let your jealousy continue to trail this child, trail this business because it is yours. Everybody say, all I have, all I have. 
belongs to God. One more time, say, all I have belongs to God. Notice how difficult it is for you to say it because you suspect that the part of the all I have, I will say, will also involve your finances. And I guarantee you, God will test it. Hallelujah. So all wealth comes from God and belongs to him. Number two, all blessings, including finances. Now, please understand this. We are, we are setting the foundations now. All blessings come from God through men to men. This is the second revelation that you must have. All blessings, including financial resources, come from God, but they are routed through men to men. Please look up. Your job from God through men to men. Your increase from God through men to men. Is that, is, is, is that all right? So you need both God and men to prosper. God and men. And Jesus grew. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature. He also grew in favor with God and when you have favor with God alone, you will have encounters, revelations, debt. But you will be poor, you will be delayed in life, and you will be a victim. It was because Jesus had favor with men that he could command that they take another man's donkey. And the man did not arrest him. You go and carry somebody's car because you are coming to church. You see that? So, do you understand what I'm sharing? Let's get this straight. All wealth comes from God. Everything that I have comes from God. My job is not why I prosper. My business is not why I prosper. My business is the funnel that allows what comes from God to flow to me. So, when the job is closed, he can use another funnel because the source still remains on the throne. So I don't, I, a, a man cannot sit down and say, I, I, I will terminate your job and waste your life. Mm -mm. You can say you terminate my job, but stop there. Because if you add any other thing more than that, you are being God. You can terminate my job, I respect it because it's your company. But allow Abba to use another funnel to get the blessing for me. It's a revelation that has changed my life. Everything on earth, man, structure, systems are all funnels, all blessings. The popular hymn writer says, praise God from whom all blessings, not praise CBN, not praise all of the great financial houses in the world. Praise God. If your wealth comes from your job, you are in trouble. It must come from God through your office, God through your business, God through whatever value adding structures you have. But it must come from God. Are we together? Say, My wealth. Please say it. My wealth comes from God. It comes through men, it comes through structures, it comes through systems to me. So find peace. You called him, he didn't pick your call. Don't call again. Be patient. Because he is only a funnel. Prove that you believe he's a funnel by not disturbing him again. When you keep calling and say, Sir, you changed my life, is proof that you are bringing one to run a parallel government with God. And his jealousy will fight both you and the person that you are trying to work with. The jealousy of God is the factor that makes him protective of everything that is exclusive God. Please sit down. Now, let's discuss the laws of kingdom wealth. The laws 
of kingdom wealth. Remember, we're dealing with the economic system of the kingdom. I'm being very methodical because I really want us to get something of substance. I'm trusting as desired by your pastor that God will shift all of us into a new dimension, even in this area. In the name of Jesus. Please look up. Um, is it all right if I have two gentlemen? I like to use people. Please come. You stand here. You stand here. God bless you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you, guys. Stand by my left one. Stand by my right. Watch this. For many years, pastor, there has been a very serious vendetta between men of God and business people as to whose perspective about the real formula for wealth is valid and should be followed. Here is the businessman teaching principles that, you know, make for wealth and abundance. From a business perspective, he went to business school, Harvard Business School, and all of that. And, he sh and this, these things have been proven. But here is a great man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman, saying, forget that nonsense. I prophesied over a billionaire. And in one night, he gave me a car, a house, and said every month he will be paying me salary. Now, I was saying, forget this. this I look at him with all his teaching. Are you seeing anything? You see, so it's been, a, it's been a contention for years. The business people said, forget about this pastor. He's the only one prospering. If you listen to him, you will be broke. And the pastor is saying, look, don't downplay the power of prophecy. Don't downplay the power of the realm of the spirit. And then both of them find out that there is a problem with their equation. The reason is because both of them are correct, but both of them are incomplete. The perspectives that they communicate were not designed to replace one another. It was supposed to complement one another. That both, listen, both the natural laws of wealth and the spiritual laws of wealth are together called the kingdom laws of wealth. Sit down, please. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? Yes. Now watch this. Here is the difference. The spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the manifestation of resources, including finance. But it stops there. The natural and the business laws are responsible for the management systems and the multiplication. This is what makes wealth transgenerational. When you dwell here, you will always have sudden breakthroughs, but you will never have a systemic dimension of increase. You are up today, down tomorrow, one testimony in January, the next one December. That's not God's desire. The path of the just, he says, is as a shining light. The sun does not shine and disappear and comes back two, two hours later. It continues to brighten. Are we together? So I will pick on the spiritual laws and then we'll end for tonight. And then please do not miss tomorrow because somewhere in this meeting, something will leave heaven and come on your life that will shift you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know this. You, you, will, you will not know how changed you are until you step out of this place. And then you will see doors open. When things happen, you will know what spiritual law was responsible for what. You will not just give God glory randomly and leave the part you should play. You know that this result was governed by my engaging the spiritual law. Are we blessed? Thank you guys. Thank you. So they are both called the kingdom laws. So the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance are separated into two. Number one, we have the spiritual laws. And then number two, we have the natural laws. Please write it down so that we'll discuss the spiritual laws briefly. Lend me a few minutes and we're done for tonight. Can you pray in the spirit while you're writing this? Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Shali prakato ziata. Lord, you spoke well about 2020. I'm already seeing the shift. By the Spirit. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Here's the prayer. 
open my eyes let me see you're the light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see one more time you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me hallelujah please write it down the first spiritual law now i'm going to say a few things that may disturb you just listen just follow me the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance in my opinion is not tithing listen very carefully i believe in tithing tithing is a foundational spiritual law but look up please the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender write it down please your tithing means nothing to god and nothing to destiny until god finds his space in your heart and in your life proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 please proverbs 23 and verse 26 when you want to do the business of wealth with god he needs more than your money he needs more than your business he needs your heart proverbs 23 and verse 26 proverbs 23 26 let me quote it okay everyone please read one to go my son uh-huh give me thine heart and then let your eyes observe my ways when i have your heart first then you can understand my methodologies i want your heart not just your tight not just your offering not just your sacrifice it's amazing how we engage these things as though we are bribing god god here is my tight make sure i see the devourer far from me make sure you bring me this quickly i drop it no no your heart is the tray that all your offerings are received from listen very carefully your heart so you can come out of an SUV that is hundreds of millions of naira worth and yet it does not move you because he's captured your heart. Please hear me. This is the one mistake with the prosperity gospel pastor. It does not seek to surrender the heart of that one who seeks to prosper. If God does not find your heart, I don't care what you are doing about wealth. It's a total waste of time and will not bless the kingdom. Please understand this. My son, give me your heart, not your offering, your heart first. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Any money, any business that will take my heart from you, let it not come. We are still doing finance. Your heart. So it does not become a do or die affair. Pastor, people kill for money. Christians, kill for money. You took my money, I will never forgive you. What is mine is mine. I must eat my share of this. And you hear all those kinds of diabolic things. And after we say it, we water it down with tongues. It does not justify it. Listen. For someone here who wants to be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom, leave the issue of money. It is your heart. Listen. When you give your life to Christ, you really don't give him your heart. You receive his life. It is when you want to be used by God that you give him your heart. I know we say generally and God understands what you are saying. But what happens in salvation is not giving your heart. You receive the life of God. That was a testament of John. This is the record that God has given us the way. And that life is in his son. Whoever hath the son hath eternal life. 
But then he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer, when it has to do with laying down, is to position you to be used by God. Sir, I submit to you that many believers are not ready for the prayers they are praying. Lord, bless me. Lord, I promise I will not leave you. Money is powerful. There is a dangerous spirit behind money that if your heart is still with you, it will tear you like a lion. You cannot handle money when your heart is with, is with you. The pride of life that comes with money, it has nothing to do with being good or bad. There is an effect of resources on a human being and it is only the surrendered nature of your heart. The problem is because many people who are teaching about wealth are not blessed. And, and because they are not blessed, they don't even know what they are saying. Oh, God forbid that I own 10 estates. And that man has never given God 1 million. People give God offering of 100, 100 naira. And right after the service, they eat bonds of 2,000. Are we together? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Why will a man be a multi... Now, I'm not talking about money. It's just a litmus test to reveal your heart. Ah! He said, I will not give God anything that will not cost me nothing. It's not about the money. It's the position of value. It's how much I see him lifted and honored. See, let me tell you sincerely, and I stand before the God of heaven. I have told God, anything I cannot give him, may it never come to me. Never! I'm not saying this just because I'm on stage preaching. Believe me. There is nothing I cannot give God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. When you get to this state, you are ready to prosper. Are you saying that it's not about money? Because many people who want money want it to land on the tray of their lusts. And they want to run to the village to prove a point, to prove this. And God says, no, not my way. If it is my way, you first die before you come alive. Is God speaking to someone? In one minute while you are seated, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you know the lost in my heart. Before I disappoint my own destiny, I pray that you take my heart. You take my heart. It all belongs to you. Please pray. Oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. My son, give me your heart, not just your business. My daughter, give me your heart. When you give your heart, you give your pride too. When you give your heart, you give your, your tendency for being attached. Give me your heart. It's not a do or die affair. Lord, I love you more than money. I love you more than business. You have my heart. We're dealing wealth here. If most people touched on this before they began to teach on wealth, we will not have the emergence of lost driven people who just want money and they stop coming to church when they are blessed. They disregard any grace when they are blessed. Not when he captures your heart. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known and I surrender this life is not my own I belong to you I belong to you it's a prayer I belong to you. Huh. My life is not my own. 
To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Please listen to me I want you to take the issue Of the surrender of your heart Seriously to God It is not only the key To wealth It is the key to everything God first God above God above I can shut any business a thousand times to preserve his presence. No. I will shut ministry a thousand times to seek for him. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. It's not a song, it's my life. Lord, I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. Please sit down. This is where the incomplete prosperity gospel has destroyed men. You have it and we take it. And our loss tears us into pieces. The more we have money, the more our pride grows. The more you have money, the more you want another wife. The more you have money, the more God becomes an option to join the queue in your life. You say, God, just wait. I'm busy now. I have checks to sign. Join the queue and I will give you an appointment just like I'm giving a minister. You just be patient and I will attend to you. So he says, my son... I know the tendencies that come with this cosmos. Give me your heart. I'm a better keeper of your heart than you. So when lust comes to enter your heart, you say it's too late. Go to heaven there. That's where he's kept my heart. Hmm. Can you look at a billion naira and walk away? Don't be quick to answer. Don't be quick to answer. Remember, we are sincere this night. Don't be quick to answer. A billion naira, no matter how much money you have in this world, a billion naira is something. Can you look at it and walk away and still say, I choose you? Not as a result of lack of exposure. You understand the gravity of what that billion can do to you and you still walk away and say, Lord, I love you that much. Can you back out of a contract because you saw the terms and you did not find the interest of God in it. And you say, Lord, I love you that much. When I was in one room and I told you I would never leave you, I meant it. Now that I'm in this palace, I will crush it down a thousand times to show the world that I am still with you. I tell you sincerely, the Spirit of God tells me this all the time. It is not because believers are not hardworking. It is not because believers are not innovative. Fundamentally, our hearts are not with him. So his jealousy cannot come to defend and protect you. But after tonight, someone's life is changing. Because for some, you will, you will go back this night and whilst preparing for tomorrow, tonight you will carry your ATM, put it on the ground. Your checkbook, put it on the ground. Are we watching now? You will carry your contract, put it on the ground. Be magnified, oh Lord, above my checkbook, above my bank account. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be my. You look at your business proposal and then you bring it before Him and you say, Lord, you are above it all. ATM never be confused as to who is Lord. My checkbook, I sign millions with you, but don't ever get used to my touching you. My heart has already touched one before you came, and it will remain so. Hmm. 
this is someone's service already oh this night as we're talking now god is showing you why generationally nobody has been able to break the back of poverty in spite of the businesses you have the, the points you have been accumulating to prove will never let god bless you you have already planned to show your brother show your pastor i'm, I'm just patient now as if i cannot talk let let this contract come they will know my true color god bless me and you will see and god says see what i'm already seeing it i am alpha omega please do not think i'm just exciting you i'm showing you why god will come and hold a person and vow that you must be blessed this year there are things that people can do business with god you are sitting in your house and you step into a realm of prepared blessings listen there are times that god will bless your farm to produce grain you will harvest process before you eat but there are times bread can come directly they are called prepared blessings you don't do anything about bread you eat it straight there are times an idea will come but there are times money will come god will bring somebody who likes you and will vow as though charmed connecting his blessings to you listen this man talking to you is not a stupid person i know what i'm saying i'm not just a preacher i tell you respectfully i have seen believe what i tell you and you will watch your life rise you will not climb a ladder you will go on a lift when you climb a ladder you feel the pain but when you're in a lift it's the lift that takes the responsibility of taking you up life is not that hard our attachment is what has programmed it to be that hard in the presence of interest everybody looks like an angel but god is the discerner of the hearts of men in the presence of interest everybody looks like he cannot kill who would have known that david would kill um uriah you would have seen that young shepherd boy that's the kind of gentleman every lady would want to marry but there was death in his heart let me tell you god loves everybody but he doesn't trust everybody trust is not just there is a proving there is a track record please hear me you're a businessman forget contract now we are coming to that one these are the kinds of people that no divination and no enchantment can walk upon them their allegiance and their heart for god is blood dripping you talk about them in the secret you are judged in the open they don't pray they are not aware god has branded and vowed his jealousy upon their lives the price is not giving him money the price even if you give satan money he will give you back because both of them are not looking for money they're looking for your heart but now oh lord i see my wrong that's what it means to be shifted heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my song oh lord be magnified oh lord be magnified you know it is not god's yoke when it is killing you he said my yoke is easy the school fees of your children is about to sink you in the ground it's a sign that someone has added another yoke will you let him tonight be abba they are my children so you maintain them but tonight you are not ashamed to say lord the earth is yours including these children including my house rent where will i get five hundred thousand between now and next week i'm in church but my landlord is waiting i know he's waiting what does it take god to touch the heart of a man do you not know he's called the father of spirits that every spirit is under his influence we've just talked about one law listen i learned this in ministry you've heard me say the lord told me if you will let men see me 
there is nothing I will not give you. God can take another man's prayer point and beg you to receive it. Because you are there giving your all to him. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, he didn't say touch not my man. <clears throat> the secret to be anointed is I have found my servant. I found David since. But it took many years to find my servant. Anything God gives me is his own. Truly speaking, it is own. You know, when people celebrate the hand of God and what he's doing, I am grateful. I truly am grateful. But God sees my heart, Pastor. I'm saying it here in the presence of everybody. I have no business building anything for myself. I am honored enough to represent his majesty. And I am secured enough in that. If he's killing you, find out whose load you are carrying. Because my yoke is easy. Could it be the load that your ego may have dropped on you? The ashamedness to look like you are limited in yourself. We always like to look like we are sufficient in ourselves. And the Bible tells us clearly that our sufficiency is of God. Hallelujah. The first, this is just one law, huh? One. The law of absolute surrender. We'll soon round up for tonight. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My heart is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask, of me I surrender please sit down can you give me five minutes is it alright if I use five minutes pastor dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord. Grant me the discipline.